This video is manual soldering with solder paste. This is one of my favorite ways to do soldering. It's kind of a quick way to get the solder out there. It's a quick way to get the general amount of solder you need on the locations you need it, and then it lets you do your magic with the soldering iron. So, if, especially for like redoing parts of a board or doing a small region of a board or populating a board piece by piece, soldering with paste and uh, manual iron is one of my favorite ways to do it. So one of the nice things about the paste is uh, the paste, you can see it doesn't, it's, you know, it's just a, it's a big glob, but it's just a little, it's a bunch of solder balls um, suspended in flux. So one of the nice things about it is it usually has enough flux to where you don't need to add extra, but you can, so it, it can help to add extra. Okay, so for, for doing this approach, um, you know, if you looked at the, the manual soldering with, um, if you look at the video I do on manual soldering with, um, with just uh, soldering, uh, with a, sorry, solder, solder wire, um, in that one we always applied flux first and then we put the part down and then we applied manual, manually applied the solder to it. Here it's kind of all combined into one step, so the, the, the flux and the solder are, are mixed into one. So what we're going to do is just take anything, so we have our, our flux here, you know, I'm just going to use, a, there's a resistor here. The main thing is you want it to be something clean, so you don't ever want to stick in a vat of flux, this vat of flux paste is about $100, you don't ever want to stick into a vat of, of, sorry, solder paste, you don't want to stick anything that can leave a gunk or residue or anything like that, so, so we're using the lead of an LED now, it's fine, it's kind of nice and clean, it's not going to leave lint or residue. And I'm going to stab out a collection of a uh, little bit of flux here, a little bit of paste here. So you can see it there on the, no, oh, you can't necessarily see it on the surface there, so. So you can see it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to smear it across the, across the pads here. And I'm just going to do a line. A lot of students, a lot of students focus on trying to do like, a, you know, very precise, um, they try to like get each pad. You don't have to do that. It's really just about getting the solder close to what you need. So for the other one, I'm gonna do it kind of bad. But one thing I wanna point out though is, you'll see, I took the paste a little bit further. I, I took the paste further on this side of the pin and further on this side of the pin. Some students, they make a mistake of they do, they do solder paste and they only let the solder paste, they start on one pad and end at the other pad. And that means that the ending pads have a little too little solder. So I always like to overshoot by at least half of a pitch width the ending solder pads. Um, okay, so for the other one, I'm gonna do it a little wrong. So for the other one, I'm gonna do, assuming you aren't quite as good at putting down, so if you don't have as much experience putting down solder paste with the lead of an LED as me, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do what you might do. So you might have something that looks like this. Okay, there we go. That's more like what you'll see students do. Um, you know, so I'm trying to be as dismissive and insulting as possible as I do this video. Um, not so much to help you, but it just makes me feel better. So, so I'm, I'm going to take my part. And uh, if you're watching this at home and your parents are within earshot and they pay for your tuition. You have to tell them that the sense of humor is part of what they pay for. So it's all in good fun. Plus, this is a YouTube thing. I got to get a thousand viewers or I don't get to just live stream from my phone. So, all right. So now we're going to place the part down, making sure it's oriented correctly. This part's gotten soldered and resoldered a few different times. It's sticking to my uh, to my tweezers. So I'm going to push it down. And you'll notice we're smearing the paste everywhere and none of it matters, right? So we got one pad over here with no solder at all. Let's zoom in, actually. So we got one pad here with no solder at all. Oops. And we got, you know, a bunch of extra solder over here. I got a pretty good line here, but look at it. It's all smushed in there. All right, so now what are we going to do? So it's kind of in the right spot. One thing, just like in the in the soldering with the, with the uh, wire of solder, with the solder spool, 
You want to make sure that you get one pin. You want to make sure it's your part is oriented correctly with just one pin soldered. Same rules apply in terms of if you get more than one pin soldered, it's going to be very difficult to realign this part. So uh, when you first touch heat to this, making sure that the part's aligned is super important. So it looks pretty good right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, you know, it's, it can be a little tough to see because it's underneath this pillow of, of solder. I'm just going to put my iron on this tip here. Now you see how the solder, it kind of stays localized to that one little region. So that one little region of the chip gets a lot of, gets melty and all the little solder balls coalesce like T1000 and nothing else is there. So everything, so I could still move this. So if I need to do it, if I said, ah, that wasn't quite right, I can reapply heat and I can readjust this part because I only allow that one pin to, to actually melt. Okay. All right, so that's pretty good. So the next thing is pin, get a second pin. So I'm gonna just, it doesn't really matter what second pin, you kind of want it to be a little far away from the first pin you did. Because it's aligned correctly, I don't really have to push on this. I do want to make sure it's on the surface. So I'm gonna put a little downward pressure, boom, got it. Um, okay, so we got two pins, so now this thing is fixed. I can push on, it doesn't go anywhere. Now we just gotta get all that solder melty and try to avoid bridges. So all I'm gonna do is just run heat across all these Boom, just hitting all these pads with heat. And you look, as we do this, these little solder balls coalesce. So I don't know how well you can see this with the microscope, but. But yeah, you can kind of see the little solder balls in here as we do this. See the solder balls? As we apply heat, as we hold heat here, these kind of melt. We sometimes we kind of have to brush them a little bit, but they kind of melt together into the pin. So we're kind of getting surrounding heat. We don't want to hold it too long though, right? So you see those little those little islands of of solder. We do want to clean those off. So those are conductive. So they are solder balls in flux. Even though they didn't melt, we weren't able to get enough heat to have them melt to T1000 into the pin. We still are going to. We're going to want to make sure these are cleaned off. Afterwards. You don't want to have leftover little conducting balls all over the surface of your board, but that's okay. We can do that afterwards. So now we're going to go over to the other side, the other side, which was much more of a mess. And okay, so this part's already pinned down, so it's not going to matter too much. But what I want to show you is how forgiving this process is. So we're, it's really just about the quantity of solder, because if we have excess solder, it's, some of it's going to kind of go on the tip of the iron. If we have too little solder, we can always add more later. But for now, I'm just gonna just, just kind of start getting these melted. So I'm gonna apply heat. I'm gonna kind of brush, I see a little pool of them over there. I'm gonna kind of brush them towards the pin. Do I still have enough solder on my tip? I, I do, so right. So even that pin, that pin that was missing solder, I had enough, just, I had enough solder on the tip of my iron to still get that. So we're still able, even though, even though we missed it with the, with the paste, you know, just the process generally leaves enough excess solder that it's okay. So I'm just going to go through here, just apply heat, let it melt, apply heat, let it melt. Okay, so what about this big old glob here? Well, we can clean it up with the iron if we want. So if we kind of sweep around, we can kind of grab that solder and we can we can put it on the pin. And so now we got a big old glove on this pin and that's fine. The other thing is we can just leave it because after we clean this, that's all going to go away. So we can also just leave it as an option too. So zooming out, looking at the whole chip, it looks to me like this whole thing is good. No bridges, but there's a lot of that excess paste. So what we're going to do, let's zoom out a little bit more. So we're going to want to be sure to get this nice and clean. So we're going to take our brush and our alcohol. You want to make sure to keep the alcohol from getting into the solder, to the solder paste. You don't want alcohol in the solder paste. I'm going to turn my hot air off. That's still on. Where's my brush? I'm going to cover the solder paste, take the LED out. Um, you really want to be sure not to let this solder paste get everywhere too. So even though we use lead-free solder, there's still metals inside here that are not good. They're not good for your health. Um, so 
But also, some people use solder paste that does have lead. And you, you don't want, you know, if it, even if it's a 1 in 100,000 chance that you were accidentally using leaded solder and it was labeled lead-free, you don't want to take that risk. So always be sure to be clean. Wash your hands after you do any, anytime you do any soldering, you want to wash your hands afterwards. But especially if you're using paste, it's really easy if you're using solder paste to accidentally have a goober on your hands. And most of you are old enough that lead's not a huge health concern for you. But having it around is bad, right? We got people with little kids that come in through here. If you got a kid that reaches their hand up, gets a smear of solder paste on it. If for some weird reason that had lead in it, that's really bad. So, so it's important for safety to be clean when using solder paste to clean up after yourself um, and to wash your hands often. So, and you really got to wash this, this flux doesn't clean off easily. So you really want to scrub your hands afterwards or use alcohol, an alcohol based cleaner. It'll dry your hands out, but it'll get all this flux and stuff off. In general, flux is a mess. Flux starts to cover all of our tools and stuff like that. So the best way to get it off is to do an alcohol based clean. You can also do a clean Kim wipe, right? If you notice, you do have a smear of solder paste on your finger and you can't really get it off. And I can show you what that looks like, right? If you do, right? So I'll get a little deliberately get some on my finger. So, so if you deliberately get some on your finger and then we go up to the camera here, all right? So I got that and I try to wipe it off, all right? You see, you can wipe it and it still leaves kind of that gray smear on there, but a little bit of alcohol a little bit of alcohol rubbed around gets that totally cleaned off. So if you, if, you, if you can't get your hands really clean with just water and soap, you can always put a little bit of alcohol on there. We use isopropyl alcohol, but I mean, really any alcohol will do. So if you got a bottle, if you got a bottle of like, uh, you know, vodka brand vodka from Costco, that'll work. Um, that's got water in it too. So it'll, it'll solvent for pretty much anything. Okay, so we got our brush here. We got our alcohol. So we're gonna, oops, we're gonna start brushing this. So, so the main thing here, so this is not just about getting it clean. When we're doing uh, solder, uh, when we're doing a uh, flux, uh, solder, solder paste, this is not just about getting the board clean. It's also about removing that excess flux. So we really want to get the bristles into our chip. We really want to brush often. Uh, oops. So sometimes you got to do this multiple times to get it off fully. I, I haven't I haven't ever had too many problems with shorts resulting from solder from excess solder uh, paste, but I have had it happen. So it's it's rare, but it can happen. Um, so let's see how that did getting cleaned up. It's pretty good. So just inspect it here. Oops, wrong way. Yeah, so still got some. So still got some, but. It's pretty good. So it got, it got the big stuff that was in the middle for the most part cleaned out. That should be fine. So we could go back and do it again if we want. Yeah, it's fine. Good enough. Although it is neat, you can see all those little things. You can see those little individual solder balls in there. That's kind of cool. You can see as we as we fiddle around with this, the individual, the size of the solder balls are visible in there. Those solder balls too, the price you pay for solder determines the size of those individual grains. So very expensive solder has very small individual grains. Uh, cheaper solder has larger grains. These look about medium size. I don't know what what's, this is. This is class. Uh, it's like class four, five, and six is commonly what I'll see. This stuff is. Oh, T3. Yes, yeah, so this is relatively cheap stuff. Um, so if you if you go to really high resolution, if you're going, you know. Expensive commercial parts, really tiny components. You want to make sure you have very fine grain solder balls. So. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody.